as founder of the Smart Structures and Dynamics Lab, I welcome you all to this introductory presentation. We started this lab in the year 2009 to create awareness about smart structures and dynamics field. Smart materials, they are perhaps the most fascinating materials which uh, were developed in the 20th century. Now, they are called smart because they possess responsive capabilities to stimuli. We apply a certain stimulus and we see some kind of response. The materials, they change their physical properties when we apply certain kind of stimuli. Now, the main smart material which we are focusing in the virtual smart structures and dynamics lab is the piezo material. Now, piezo electric material, the word piezo electricity comes from two words, piezo meaning pressure and the second word is electricity. Now, this looks like any other ordinary material. Here we have some kinds of piezo materials of different shapes and sizes. It is in the form of a sheet. Now, why it is called smart? Because if we apply an electric field across the terminus of the patch, the patch tends to undergo change in its size. And conversely, if we apply stress to the piezo material, what we find is we find the development of charges. So, these dual relations, both direct and converse effects, they are exhibited by the piezo material. Now, what is a smart structure? Here, a smart structure is basically a system which has built in sensors and or actuators, and it might also have a control mechanism by which it is also capable of sensing a stimulus and responding to the same. Now, if we bond the same piece of material on a structure such as this one, now the structure becomes smart. The smart material it provides signal, by this signal we can identify the dynamic characteristics of the structure. So, this is the point we tend to use in the smart structures and dynamics lab. So, here the main instrumentation or the sensors which we are using they are basically piezo sensors. So, our lab the virtual smart structures and dynamics lab it provides a platform to the inquisitive students. They can be B tech students, they can be postgraduate students, they can be research scholars or they can even be high school students, so that they can perform basic experiments related to smart structures in an online fashion. So, the colleges do not have to invest money in instrumentation or the sensors. Now, this is a highly interdisciplinary lab. So, we invite students from all disciplines to perform experiments and learn the basic concepts of smart materials and structures. Through this lab, we aim to make the teaching and learning exercise a fun activity. We have experiments of diverse nature for BTEC students, we have very preliminary experiments simulation based related to structure dynamics. For higher master students, we have more rigorous experiments and similarly for research scholars, we have lot of additional online resources. So, what we expect is that the student reads the manual, understands and then he performs the experiment. However, if you are high school student and somehow if you are not able to understand the manual in the first attempt, do not get disheartened, continue and perform the experiment. Discuss the things with your teachers and when you repeat the process few times, you will definitely understand it. Please feel free to contact us. So, this provides you a platform where you can learn concepts at your own pace and do not be afraid to commit mistakes because it is for your own learning. So, if you do mistakes by your mistakes also you can learn. So, here we are planning this introductory session by two eminent uh, team members of our lab Navit and Sushmita they will brief you about the various experiments which are to be conducted and how these are to be conducted. Navit is the senior most research scholar in our lab and she has been active in the area of 
energy harvesting and smart materials for over three years. Sushmita has just completed her MTech and she is working in the area of electromechanical impedance technique. So, this whole orientation is designed so that you do not face any problem when you do experiments. So, with this I wish that you will enjoy the orientation part and then after this you will be in position to do the experiments. Thank you very much. Hello everybody, I am Naveet Kaur, I am a research scholar at Indian Institute of Technology IIT Delhi. I am working under the supervision of Dr. Suresh Bhalla. My research work is the uh, feasibility of integrated structural health monitoring and energy harvesting uh, using piezo sensors. Today I will be delivering a talk on virtual smart structures and dynamics lab at IIT Delhi. I have divided my whole lecture in three parts. First I will be delivering introductory lecture on the smart materials. Then I will be covering the introduction about the virtual smart structures and dynamics lab and I will take you to the tour of the lab. And next I will be covering the steps to perform the experiment. This is also divided into two parts. First is the, I will be briefing you the steps to perform the experiment offline, then I will be conducting the experiments online. So, starting with the introductory lecture. Now, first is what is a smart material? Which property of any material compels it to behave smartly? So, any material which has the abil ability to change its physical properties in a specific manner uh, when a specific type of input is applied on them is a smart material. So, different type of smart materials are piezoelectric materials, electrological fluids, shape memory alloys, optical fibers. So, now taking them one by one, first is the piezoelectric material. So, in these materials when stress is applied, they produce electrical charges and when electrical field is applied on these materials, they produce mechanical strains. So, when electrical field is applied on them, they will either get uh, uh, contracted or may be expanded. This will be clear when we will watch this video. So, in this video you can see the material is getting deformed it is getting uh, compressed when voltage is applied on them. Next are the shape memory alloys. These materials have a unique property that they memorize their shape. So, when uh, heat is given, uh, they are, when these materials are heated, they memorize their original shape. They regain their original shape when they are heated. So, let us watch this video to understand. So, in the previous video, I showed how the nitinol remembers its original form when it's heated up. Now, many people were wondering if you could tie it in a knot and would it revert to its original shape? Let's give that a go. So, I tried a very... In this bowl, uh, they have just put uh, hot water and this is a sh um, wire made of shape memory alloy and when he will put this wire in the uh, hot water, it will regain its original shape. This array of different knots and from what I have noticed, it kind of works. Even though I could not get the knot as tight as I wanted because it is made from metal, it is still pretty impressive. Ok, let us try something else. So, here is a new batch of nitinol which I have some more wire around the top of a can and heated it to... Now, he is trying to um, uh, give a shape of circular shape to this wire. It will heat this wire at 500 degrees Celsius to make it to memorize this circular shape by revolving the wire around this skein. Set the circular shape. And now, when I heat up this pathetic excuse for a triangle, it reverts back to a circular shape. Interesting. Now for this last test, it's just a bit of fun. I scrumpled up a big bunch of straight nitinol and threw it in a jar of hot water, just to see what would happen really. It 
here we go. And it kind of looks like a spider's web. So there we have it. More experiments with nitinol. Right. Next type is the electrological fluids. On these materials, when electrical field is applied, they change their viscosity. Let's watch this video. So, when electrical field is not applied across these electrodes, the fluid is just flowing as and now they have applied the electrical field. Now, you can see the change in the viscosity of the fluid, it has got thicker. And again he removes the, as he removes the field, the liquid then again starts flowing. Next type is the optical fibers. So, when there is a change in temperature or pressure and when mechanical strains are applied on these type of op uh, materials, there is a change in the opto electronic signals for the optical fibers. And the other type is the magnetostrictive materials. So, when magnetic field is applied on these type of materials, they produce mechanical strains. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Now, we will be concentrating on the piezoelectric materials because uh, the whole lab is actually based on these uh, piezoelectric materials. In these materials, in the direct effect, they show two different type of effects. In the direct effect, when mechanical stresses are applied on these materials, they produce electrical charges. So, in this animation, you can see when the material, piezoelectric material is uh, uh, compressed, voltage in the form of positive and negative you can see is being produced in these materials. The other effect is the converse effect. So, in this effect uh, when the electrical field is applied on piezoelectric materials they produce mechanical strain. So, in this figure you can see when electrical field is applied across these uh, this piezoelectric material it is getting elongated. Next as the constitutive relations. So, for any elastic material, when strain is applied, it produces stress, but in the piezoelectric material, in addition to stress, electric field is also being generated. And uh, for any elastic material, when there is a change in the um, charge density, electrical field is produced, but in piezoelectric materials, in addition to electrical field, there is a development of stress. This equation is used for the sensor application. When the piezoelectric material is used as a sensor, then this equation is used and when E 3 is 0, when there is no electrical field, so only stresses are being produced, then the equation will reduce to this and so it becomes 0, this E 3 becomes 0. So, using the basic relation the voltage generated by the piezoelectric material is given by this relation in the direct effect. So, voltage is actually directly proportional to the strain. This equation is for the direct effect when the PZT material is used as a sensor. And the sensitivity of piezo, piezo material is 200 millivolts micrometer per meter. This is the plot of a uh, typical voltage response of a PZT material attached to the structure. In this uh, material, in this plot you can see the variation of voltage with respect to time and you can observe that initially the voltage is high and slowly it dies down due to damping of the material. Next we have done the FFT of that same voltage response and converted that time domain data into frequency domain. So, uh, the uh, advantage of uh, performing FFT is that we will get the frequency content of any response. So, uh, what is the advantage of getting frequency content is that we will come to know which frequency is contributing maximum to the response of the structure and that frequency is actually the 
natural frequency of that structure. So, possible application of piezo materials are in the direct effect it can be used as a sensor which is used for the structural health monitoring of any structure that is SHM. In the converse effect piezo sensors can be used as actuators and when these materials are used in a combined action that is direct and the converse effect simultaneously they are used as electromechanical impedance transducers. This technique of SHM is called EMI electromechanical impedance technique. In the direct effect the frequency range is low it, it is in the range of hertz so 5 hertz to 100 hertz and the EMI technique is a high frequency uh, technique in which the frequency becomes 300 kilo, 30 kilohertz to 400 kilohertz. So, the frequency range has now changed from hertz to kilohertz in the EMI technique. So, in EMI technique a PZT patch is surface bonded to the structure using adhesive and excited at a frequency ranging between 30 to 40 400 kilohertz using an impedance analyzer. You can see a PZT patch is being attached to this host structure and what is being done in this EMI technique is that we choose a subset of frequencies from this range and for the first frequency for F1 frequency among that subset the a sine wave signal is generated by the LCR meter and then transferred to this PZT patch. In this first stage of EMI technique this, uh, this PZT patch will act as an actuator. So, as this PZT patch is uh, connected is uh, attached to the host structure, so it will cause the host structure to actuate to vibrate. So, in this second stage of EMI technique this same PZT patch will start acting as a sensor. Now, it will start sensing the response of this structure and uh, it will acquire the data using the LCR meter in the form of admittance and that is real being conductance and the susceptance being the imaginary part. So, in EM, uh, EMI technique the PZT patch acts as a sensor and an actuator simultaneously. So, in this diagram you can see a PZT patch being attached to the structure and using the LCR meter uh, which is connected to the computer the signature for this whole range which we have chose for, uh, chosen for the EMI technique is being acquired. The, these are the conductance and the susceptance, susceptance plot of uh, typical signature and uh, these plots are uh, like in uh, LCR meter captures the conductance values for each frequency and uh, it keeps on adding and this becomes the conductance signature of the PZT patch for any attached to any structure. Now, we have considered a I section in which we have uh, given a damage at the bottom flange we have created a hole of 5 mm dia and when we compare the signatures this is the undamaged signature conductance signature of the PZT patch and when the um, damaged signature is captured you can see there is a clear difference between the undamaged and the damaged signature. So, in this way we can clearly identify the damage in any structure using the EMI technique. Next part is the introduction of the virtual smart structures and dynamics lab and I will take you uh, to the tour of this lab. This is the whole uh, virtual smart structures and dynamics lab at IIT Delhi. It is a uh, part of the virtual lab project sponsored by MHRD. It has also been selected as one of the virtual labs under the project pilot project of QEEE quality enhancement and engineering education. So, you can see all the experimental setup for the experiments which are performed in this lab. I will be explaining all of them in my further slides. So, in this lab there are total 8 experiment, 
4 are the trigger based experiment, experiment number 1 to 4 are trigger based experiments and uh, experiment number 5 to 8 are simulation based experiment. Uh, trigger based experiments, the user actually triggers the exp um, experimental setup and he acquires the data and saves the data in his computer. So, the user gets the real life feeling of performing the experiment in a real life. So, also the video and audio links which are available on the website, they gives the user a feeling of performing the experiment in real life. And in the simulation based experiment, the idea is to use the computer models. So, in order to uh, understand the basic concepts which are of the dynamics, these experiments have been fabricated. So, you can see the students performing the experiments remotely. Next is the VSSDL uh, tour. First experiment is based on the um, vibration characteristics of this cantilever beam. The aim of this experiment is to get the natural uh, frequency of this uh, cantilever beam when it is excited under free vibrations. The uh, PZT patch is attached at the fixed end and the uh, beam is excited by this revolving wheel. So, it helps to create a constant load at it. Uh, constant time intervals. This is uh, the mic which, which is used to create the audio effects. When we will perform this experiment, we will uh, come to uh, know the voice being generated by this uh, hammer hitting. And this is the camera which enables you to see the whole setup for experiment 1 and 4. The readings are uh, the readings are captured uh, using this digital multimeter DMM. This DMM is actually connected to the um, user's computer remotely via internet uh, using the software called vpro. The vpro is a mandate to perform experiment trigger based experiments in this lab. So, the links for this uh, software is available on the website. So, whatever readings are being captured by this instrument DMM, they are transferred to the user's uh, computer via vpro software remotely through internet. Next experiment is uh, the aim of the next experiment too is to get the axial modes of a freely suspended aluminum bar. In real life, it is very difficult to achieve the higher order modes. So, uh, this experiment enables us to get the higher order modes of uh, any structure which is an aluminum bar in this case. So, you can see a bar which is suspended freely with the help of uh, this flexible tape. In this uh, bar, a PZT patch is attached here. In this experiment, actually, two PZT patches are attached, one at the top and the other at the back side and these um, PZT patches are connected in parallel in order to get the axial mode of this aluminum bar. The readings uh, for this experiment are being captured by LCR meter. This is the instrument which is used for capturing the data. Uh, this 
instrument is called LCR and this is used for the experiments which are based on EMI technique. It captures the conductance and the susceptance signatures of the PZT patch and this uh, LCR meter is also connected to the user's uh, computer via internet through uh, VPro software. So, in this experiment also you need uh, VPro software to perform the experiment. Next is the experiment number 3. This experiment is based on forced vibrations. So, the aim of this experiment is to get the um, natural frequency of this 3.2 meter long steel beam under the forced vibration. The difference between experiment number 1 and uh, 3 is that the first experiment was based on the free vibrations. So, however, in the experiment number 3, it is based on the forced vibrations which are produced by this shaker. So, uh, the modes which are missed in the first experiment can be deliberately captured using this shaker which can be adjusted for any frequency range for excitation. So, you can see the 3.2 meter long steel beam closely in this video. The shaker is kept at the bottom and it is attached to the bottom flange of the beam. The stringer of this shaker is attached to the bottom flange of the beam. This camera is uh, used for capturing the video for experiment number 3. This is the function generator which uh, will produce the electrical signal in the form of sine wave and we have adjusted the um, sine wave frequency in a sweep form using this function generator. This electrical signal is transferred to this amplifier which amplifies this signal and then finally transfers that signal to the shaker. So, shaker then converts that electrical signal to the mechanical signal in the form of force. Next is experiment number 4. This experiment is based on photogrammetry. So, the aim of this experiment is to plot a load versus deflection graph when different loads are being kept on this simply supported beam. The deflection of this, this point C is measured using this uh, using the photogrammetry. So, the whole uh, experimental setup the picture of this setup is captured via the camera. We know the distance between the point A and B, it is 100 mm and we draw normal from point C to line AB. As we know the distance between these two points, so we can uh, get the length of this uh, line AB and we can calibrate the length from this point C to line AB. Next step is in the next step we put the load on this beam. So, uh, first is uh, the no weight condition in which there is no weight on the uh, on this beam and we capture the picture and measure the length of line AC and in the second step we put a load first load on this uh, simply supported beam and it will get deflected and we will then again measure the length of the, uh, the line C to line AB and similarly we will repeat this process for different load uh, values. So, we will keep on adding the load on this beam and we will get the deflect uh, this the length of this line and calibrate the length with this reference line a b. This will be more clear when we will perform the experiment.
Next stage is to uh, perform the experiment. So, now I will be covering the steps to perform experiment in the lab. First, I will be covering the steps which are which uh, offline, then in the second stage I will be performing the experiments online. So, when we click this link ssdl.itd.ac.in vssdl home. So, you will be prompted to this page as I have told that there are four uh, eight experiment four trigger based experiments and next four simulation based experiments. So, you can see the list of these experiments here. In on the home page we have given the links of the videos which helps you to understand the theory behind the experiments. So, they these links are easily uh, can be easily accessible for better understanding of the experiments and these videos are specifically uh, based on the experiments being performed in the VSSDL lab. Also there is a link for QEEE package in this uh, link we have given a very uh, explanatory uh, way to uh, for the step by step procedure to perform the experiment for all the experiments. So, can, uh, first taking the trigger based experiments, <coughs> experiment number 1 as I have already explained the experimentation, uh, the instruments being used for experiment and I have already explained the aim of this experiment which is to get the vibrational characteristics of this aluminum cantilever. So, so, the very first thing which is expected from the users is that they read the manual of the experiment. Next step is to perform the pre experimental quiz, the, for all the experiments we have given a pre experimental and a post experimental quiz link. So, before performing the experiment it is expected that the user performs this experimental quiz. Next thing to perform the trigger based experiment the user require the vpro software. So, we have uh, given the links to download the software uh, on the website. So, the user can install the softwares from these links. Next you can see the real uh, setup of the experiment by clicking this link and uh, then he can click this link to perform the experiment. So, when uh, he, ha he has uh, installed the vpro software and uh, when he performs this experiment he will get this screen in this the user first specifies the file name and he can give the uh, path of the directory where he can store the data. Then he can give the he needs to give the sampling interval here we will give the 1 millisecond and the number of readings 5000. So, when he clicks this button play he will get these two graphs. First graph is for the voltage response with varying with time and the second plot is the FFT plot. So, as I have told that FFT gives the frequency content of any voltage any response. So, we in from this plot we can get the experimental natural frequency of the cantilever. So, you can see that just with a click we can get the natural frequency of a structure. The uh, next uh, the aim of this experiment is now to compare the natural frequency which can be obtained from this formula which is available in the manual of this experiment and compare it with this experimental natural frequency. So, after that now the uh, user is expected to perform the post experimental quiz. <coughs> Next is experiment number 2 in this experiment the aim is to identify the high frequency axial modes of this freely suspended beam. Again the uh, user is ex expected to read the manual and perform the pre experimental quiz. 
if he has already uh, installed the vpro software he doesn't need to install it again for the experiment number 2 and he can see the real life uh, real setup of this experiment 2 you, by clicking this link and when he clicks this link to perform the experiment he will be prompted to this screen again he can give the path of this uh, file name where the data will be stored in this experiment the user needs to give a uh, range frequency range of 100k to 120k with a step of uh, interval of uh, 100 hertz and when he uh, clicks this button play these two graphs will come this is the conductance plot varying with the frequency which we have chosen and this is the susceptance plot again the uh, aim of this experiment is to compare the natural frequency uh, which we have got experimentally so this is the natural frequency corresponding uh, conductance plot and this uh, is the theoretical uh, uh, formula to get the theoretical natural frequency it is available in the manual so the aim is to compare the theoretical natural frequency with, with the experimental natural frequency then again after performing the experiment the user needs to perform the post experimental quiz in experiment number 3 the aim is to get the uh, dynamic characteristics of this 3.2 meter long steel beam under forced excitation so it's a forced excitation based experiment the user is again expected to read the manual and perform the pre experimental quiz and here the using these links he can see the real life uh, real time setup of the experiment and uh, uh, with this click he needs to perform the experiment and again he uh, can give the file name here and he can choose the directory where he wants to save the file sampling interval he can give 1 millisecond number of readings 5000 and when he clicks this button play he will get these two plots first is the voltage response varying with time varying with uh, time and the this is the FFT of this voltage response so the aim of this experiment is to compare this natural frequency with the theoretical frequency in experiment number 4 4 it is based on the photogrammetry so when uh, he will perform the experiment 4 he will uh, be prompted to this window the user then needs to capture this picture and save it for the first case when there is no weight on this beam so i will explain the steps to get the deflection for the case when there is no weight and when there is first weight so those steps are required to be repeated for all the different four loads which are being added simultaneously so in the first case when there is no weight the user will save that picture and he needs to open that picture in word and the user is now required to draw a line between these points a and b in word as we know the distance between these two points is actually 100 mm so he can relate the length which he has got in the word with this 100 mm so we can say uh, this 8.61 units is equivalent to 100 mm then he will draw a line from point c to line a b and he will measure the length of this line now he can relate the length this length with the equivalent length of 100 mm using this formula so we have designated this equivalent length with to y1 y1 corresponds to the length of this um, line from point c to point a b for no weight case similarly uh, he will capture the uh, picture for the first uh, for the second case 
when there is one weight kept on the beam. Now, the beam is expected to deflect under this load and this length is expected to increase. The length between C and A B is expected to increase. So, again he will uh, relate this length with the 100 mm length and get a equivalent length which we have designated as y 2 for case 2. So, the deflection for the first case is when there is no weight and when first weight of 0 0.43 newtons is kept on the beam that can be calculated by this formula delta y is equal to y 2 minus y 1. So, in this way when the second weight is kept he will get the deflection and similarly he will needs to repeat these steps for all the weights. And finally, he uh, needs to plot the load versus the deflection curve. Next are the simulation based experiments. There are uh, like I have already told there are four different uh, experiments uh, which are based on simulation. I will be covering experiment number 7 and the 5, 6 and 8 experiments will be covered by uh, Sushmita. So, this experiment number 7 is based on the damage detection and the qualitative quantification using the EMI technique. In this experiment, we have considered a 2D structure, a plate structure in which we will be acquiring the signature in the undamaged state and in for the damage we have created holes in this 2D plate structure. So, first the user will read the manual of this experiment and perform the quiz. So, first uh, step is to acquire the signature for the pristine stage that is the undamaged stage. When he clicks this link acquire signature, he will be prompted to this screen. Here the user needs to give the frequency range. So, the uh, recommended range is 115 hertz to 134 hertz and he will click this button submit. So, the um, computer starts taking the data for the um, given range and this kind of plot will come. The user can download the data using this link and uh, click this link next experiment to proceed further. The similar steps uh, will be repeated for the in uh, damage condition. So, when he will press this button induce damage, three different type of damages will be um, given in this 2D structure, first is the incipient damage, second is the moderate damage and third is the severe damage. In the incipient damage, we have created two holes in this 2D uh, plate structure for the mo moderate four holes and for the severe, we have created six holes. So, uh, the steps which we have uh, done for the pristine stage will be repeated again for the incipient level damage and then for the moderate level and severe damage. Now, when he has the user has got the data for all the four stages undamaged and the three damaged stages, he will compare the he needs to compare the conductance plot conductance signature for the pristine and the damaged stages and also uh, he needs to plot a histogram of the RMSD value which can be um, the formula for this uh, RMSD can be uh, referred in the manual. So, again after performing the experiment, the user needs to uh, perform the post experimental quiz. And now next step is to perform these experiments online. Now, continuing with the last part of the lecture, here we will be uh, explaining you the steps of the experiments. Which, uh, which are required to perform the experiments online. So, in this part the user will come to know the experiments, the steps uh, from the user's point of view. Starting with experiment number 1. So, 
this is how the um, so this is the user interface starting with experiment number 1 so as i have told that the there's a link for the manual of experiment so here you can see all the uh, steps are very briefly given in this manual so the user needs to read this manual and this link by clicking this link one another thing i la like to add is that for the for viewing the real setup of this experiment it is recommended that the user opens this link in the internet explorer so for experiment 1 when the user clicks this link switch on the sound of this setup so you can see the real uh, real time setup of the experiment number 1 the user name and password required to open this uh, camera setting is guest guest id is guest and password is also guest so the user can increase the size of this uh, page by changing the settings in the client settings. So you can change uh, increase the size by changing the view size properties. you have to bear with it uh, so the connecting time with the camera depends on the internet speed i'll reduce the size to the smaller size again to get the sound effects so now here in this you can see the hammer is continuously uh, impacting the cantilever beam and you can also hear the noise of the impact being produced by this hammer. Now we will perform the experiment by clicking this link in experiment 1. So now for to perform the experiment the user should be using the chrome browser so when uh, this uh, exe file will be downloaded so now when he using the file name whatever he wants to give he can give the file name here and change the directory path when he clicks the button play i have already given 1 millisecond uh, sampling and the total number of readings 5000 5, so when I click this button play, it again asks me the name and the path of the file, I will keep it same. So you can see the impact of the hammer is producing voltage response in the PZT patch. Now why we are getting two different uh, responses here is that the hammer in the uh, 5000 readings during this uh, 5 seconds the hammer has hit the cantilever beam twice that is why we are getting two impact responses and this uh, plot gives the FFT response of this voltage so when you zoom this part when you zoom this part you can see a 
a very sharp peak at a frequency of 19 hertz. So, this 19 hertz is actually the natural frequency of that cantilever beam. So, this experimental natural frequency has to be compared with the theoretical frequency which I have explained in my presentation. Similarly, we will proceed for the experiment number 2. So, again the manual is given, you can read the instructions in this manual and also the pre-experimental quiz and the post-experimental quiz is given here. The user needs to perform the pre and the post-experimental quiz for all the experiments before performing and after performing the experiment. So, again when he clicks this button, sorry, it has to be opened in Internet Explorer. Experiment 2, to see the real time setup. So, password is guest, ID and password is guest and guest. In this experiment, you do not need to um, enable the sound for experiment 2. So, you can see the aluminum bar hanging in a free free condition using this flexible tape. So, this is the real time setup for the experiment number 2. Again uh, for experiment 2 as I have already explained the steps. If the user clicks this button, he will be prompted to this page here. The frequency range 100 k to 120 k, file name he can give, also the file path he wants to, if he wants to change he can change from here and when he starts the experiment, it start capturing the conductance and the susceptance values in real time for experiment number 2. So, you will ultimately get the expected plot as I have shown in my presentation. So, I will stop it and proceed further for uh, the ex next experiment. So, third experiment as I have told that in uh, this experiment is based on the forced excitation being produced by the shaker. So, in this experiment the uh, forcing frequency which we are giving is a sine wave with a frequency ranging from 2 hertz to 48 hertz. That has been given by using the function generator. So, to see the real time setup of this uh, experiment, we will open the website in Internet Explorer, open the experiment number 3, click here to see the experiment, guest, guest, password, ok. So, this connecting time uh, with the camera depends upon the speed of your internet connection. So, to perform the experiment it has to be done in chrome and to see this setup it has to be opened in internet explorer. So, for experiment 3 I will switch on the sound, so that uh, you can get the real time feeling of performing the experiment. Okay. So, here you can see the shaker, it is connected to the bottom flange of the beam. 
the snoring sound which you are hearing is being produced by this shaker as we have given a sweep frequency so between 2 hertz to 48 hertz the natural frequency of this beam is lying so the natural frequency of this beam is around 40 hertz so when that frequency matches with the forced frequency produced by the shaker maximum noise is being created so this snoring sound is produced by the resonance being uh, produced due to the resonance when forcing frequency is matched with the natural frequency of this beam. Okay. Now I will perform the experiment 3. It has to be performed in uh, Chrome. It will download the VXE file. When I open that VXE file, again I have given uh, 1 millisecond interval, 5000 readings. We can change the file name and the path. I will keep it as it is and start the experiment. take some time to capture 5000 readings it is again asking me the location and the file name this uh, experiment also helps to get the natural frequency of the beam so as you can see the voltage response for 5 seconds and this plot is the FFT of this voltage response. Now, when you see it closely, you can see the natural frequency of this beam is coming around 40 hertz. As we have given the frequency from 2 hertz to 48 hertz, so now we can with a click get the natural frequency of that sim, uh, beam. Now coming to experiment number 4, as I have explained that this experiment is based on the photogrammetry. So I will open the setup camera in explorer. Experiment 4, give the username as guest password as a guest so now this is the setup for experiment 4 this consists of a simply supported beam the uh, camera for experiment 1 and 4 are same, so you are also able to see experiment 1 here. But in this experiment, we are uh, uh, bothered about the picture of experiment number 4. So the user will click here to save the snapshot of this camera, he will click here, he can save this picture on say desktop, I will save it. So, in this way uh, the user can save the picture wherever he wants to save and 
the uh, method of performing the experiment I have explained in the presentation. The user needs to draw a line between these two points AB and he can calibrate the length of this line with line from point C to line AB. So, in this way he will perform, he will um, repeat the experiment for four different cases and he will get the load versus deflection curve. And now, uh, experiment number 7 simul from among the simulation based experiments, I will explain experiment number 7. So, in this case we have considered a 2D plate and this ex uh, experiment is based on the EMI technique. So, for the capturing the signature in the pristine stage, I will click this button acquire signature, I will give a frequency range of 115 to 134 hertz and submit the computer starts acquiring the data. This is actually the measured data for a plate structure. The user after when uh, the complete signature has been acquired, the user needs to click this button download data. take some time to take uh, readings. Now, when the uh, computer has acquired the data, the user will click this button download data. He can save this file. Anywhere he wants to save, he can choose the path and click this button next experiment. And next step, he will induce the damage as I have explained there are three different type of damages. So, again he will repeat the uh, data acquisition as we have done for the pristine stage. He will click this button acquire signature for the incipient, moderate and the severe damage and uh, he needs to compare the signatures for the undamaged that is pristine stage with the three level of damages. So, he has got the excel sheet in which there is a data for the undamaged stage and the three different damages. He will compare those datas with the each other and he needs to uh, plot a RMSD graph as explained in the manual of this experiment. So, next part uh, will be covered by uh, Sushmita, where she will be explaining the simulation based other three experiments that is experiment number 5, 6 and 8 and uh, further next experimental part she will be explaining. Hello everyone, I am Sushmita. I completed my MTech uh, from Indian Institute of Technology under supervision of Dr. Suresh Balla. And now I am working as a project assistant with him on the virtual smart structure and dynamics lab. Now I will qu quickly describe about the experiments of simulation based that is experiment number 5, 6 and 8. The simulation based experiments are mainly for the beginners who are new in this field. And now I will quickly give a brief description of the simulation based experiment. During this experiment or before performing that or each of you can go through the pre and post experimental quiz and which has been given with the link for each of the experiment. 
Now for the experiment number 5, a structure undergoes for a free vibration when distributed from the static equilibrium position without any external dynamic excitation. So, so the structure vibrates at its natural frequency which is a function of its function, uh, steepness and its vibrating motion decays depending upon the damping ratio of the material. For this case, the simply supported beam uh, was excited into a flexural mode uh, which in, uh, resulted in altering compressive and tensile strain at the uh, top and bottom phases simultaneously. The main objective of this experiment is to study the modes of the vibration for the simply supported beam under flexure. And the total uh, uh, model is based on the disk system where the user can easily get the natural frequency of the beam and simulate the uh, first few modes shapes. Now if we will go through the manual. Then we can see that the uh, natural frequency has been given by the formula that is Fn equal to pi n square by 2, 2 i cell square to by ei by rho i and uh, the mode shape has been given by y x equals to sin n pi x by l where l is the length of the beam, ei is the flexural rigidity, a cross sectional area, rho is the density and Fn which I already told is the natural frequency. So now if you are uh, if you will look into the experiment and if you are going to take a steel beam then if we are going to perform that then uh, we are taking the length of the beam as a 10 meter and the uh, breadth is 3 meter and uh, the depth of the beam is uh, 4 meter and then if we will uh, enter the density in kg per meter cube then it is like 8050 and the Young's modulus will be 180 for stainless cell. And now the uh, value for the uh, value of n if you are going to take the n equals to 1 then it will calculate the natural frequency and uh, here we can see the uh, mode shape in the animation form and this is the another exercise for the users which they can perform after the experiment where they have to plot the different values of L and they can get the value of F for different values of F L. Now for the experiment 6 the main objective of this experiment is to study the modes of the vibration for square uh, plate which is simply supported on all the edges using modal analysis. Modal analysis is a process whereby the structure is described in terms of natural dynamic characteristics as natural frequency, damping and mode shapes. Now uh, if we will see this, this is also a discrete stiffness where the stiffness and the mass damping will be modeled as a discrete property unlike a discrete system uh, which poses a finite number of degrees of freedom. The distributed system which are considered to be the composed of the infinite number of infinitesimal mass particle theoretically poses infinite number of degrees of freedom too. For this experiment the plate has been divided into a number of strip uh, uh, along x and y axis. So however the first few modes are much uh, significant so it is not necessary to compute all of the modes. Hence again if we will go to the manual then we can see that the natural frequency has been given by the fn equals to uh, pi m square plus n square by twice l square root over d by rho, uh, rho t where we can get the different modes of vibration for simply supported plate from the uh, x and y direction both and d is the parameter which has been given by et cube by 12 into 1 minus v square. Now in this experiment if we will uh, take a uh, concrete beam and then we, uh, the value of l is given by 10 meter and the thickness is like 3 meter and poison ratio for the concrete we are taking 0 0.2 and density is 2, point, uh, 2 4 0 0 and E is 7 into 10 to the power 9. Then if you are taking the value of m equals to 1 and n equals to 1 then it will calculate the value of frequency that is uh, 73.990 and here it is this animation is showing the mode shapes and then uh, and in addition there is also an exercise for the user that at the end of the experiment where the user can perform the experiment and needs to plot the graph between the frequency and length of the beam and also for the previous case also plate keeping all the fact other factors constant. Now if we will go to the next experiment uh, that is experiment number uh, 8 where we will discuss about the Bandra seal link bridge. Bandra seal link bridge is basically a cable state bridge with a pre-stage uh, concrete uh, viaduct on either side that links with the Bandra and Worli and also the bridge was designed on the first cable state bridge to the constructed in open seas in India. And this bridge mainly having uh, three parts, uh, first one is uh, the uh, northern uh, approach where the structure is mainly uh, made of uh, significant uh, uh, a present uh, precast uh, uh, segmental construction and for the part 2 it consists of the cable state Bandra beach and the for part 3 it is made of south and approach uh, structure mainly with precast segmental construction. 
as we already discussed earlier it is not necessary to compute all the modes of uh, only few modes are only significant so for this experiment also we are only interested to compute few uh, fewer modes and if we will see for the first mode the main uh, aim of the experiment is to uh, illustrate the fundamental modes of this uh, beam of this bridge and this is the first mode where we can see that the frequency is coming at 1.204 And if we will see the fourth mode, where the frequency is coming at 1.388 uh, hertz, and for the tenth one, here we are only considering the uh, ten modes. Then it is coming at 4.57579. Uh, so basically, uh, we are uh, the main simulation study covered in our experiment is mainly based on the geometrical and material property uh, of this bridge. The finite element model is highly idealized and not updated on the actual bridge model. So the structural dynamic aspects covered are the idealized and may not be needed for the uh, main uh, construction of this bridge. This was the brief description of performing the experiments for our smart structure and dynamics lab, and hope this is going to be very useful for uh, all of you. and wish you all a very happy experimentation thank you so i hope you had a very good time with the introductory session of the virtual smart structures and dynamics lab so when you are doing the things for the first time you need to install certain software and this could be a little bit tedious process so don't get disheartened by this this is only one time activity so you download the software install as per the instructions and then you perform the experiments as have been explained by navit and sushmita if you face any kind of problem please contact us or endeavor us to make the things as user friendly as possible so please invite your friends also if you understand any experiment and if you are very confident about it to teach it to your next and best friend by this way you you can help us in disseminating the knowledge and also in making the concept of smart materials and structures popular we endeavor that more and more students they will come forward and they will take up a research career in the field of smart materials and structures so please email your feedback to us thank you very much